Now, bleeding your brakes is something that all mountain bikers will have to tackle from time to time. And in this particular video, we're going to look at bleeding SRAM brakes, and in particular, the latest ones using the bleeding edge port. Now, the bleeding edge port was a new creation from SRAM that makes bleeding a bit easier and a lot less messy. Now, if you're unsure if your brakes have this new port or it's the older system, if you look on screen now, the one on the left is the older system, and on the right is the newer system with the bleeding edge port. Now this new system can be found on brakes manufactured from 2015 onwards, but it's not on every single model. So for this particular job, these are the tools you're going to need. So to start with, you're going to need the relevant bleeding kit for your brakes. So the SRAM and AVID brakes, you need this sort of bleed setup. If you don't want to get the full SRAM spec one, Epic Bleed Solutions also make a bleed kit that does fit. Although I've not tried it, so I can't tell you how good it is. Now you're going to need a few other things as well. So first up, you can need the bleeding edge adapter. So this is the regular adapter that suited the brake on the left that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And this is the new bleeding edge tool. Now the advantage of using this is it locates straight into the brake and the tool itself is used to open and close that bleed port. So it minimizes all the seepage that you get and also the chance of air getting back into the brake. Really nice, simple bit of kit. And it's just an adapter. So if you've already got the SRAM or the Avid bleed kit, just need to get that piece to complete the process. You're gonna need the various bleed blocks to suit your particular brake caliper. The idea of that is to push the pistons apart to get them in the right position, basically, for when you bleed them. Next up, you can need the relevant Torx keys. In this case, it's a T10 and a T25. And, of course, Allen keys that's gonna suit the job for your bike. In my case, to take the rear wheel out, I need a six millimeter Allen key. You might not need one at all in yours. I need a five, a four, and a two and a half. Also, you're going to need some dedicated dot fluid. Ideally, I would say get some new fluid because in time this stuff can ingest moisture into it, which does affect the performance of your brakes in the long term and will mean you're going to need to do this process sooner. So if possible, a new fresh one. If not, just make sure it's not cloudy or looks contaminated in any way. And now I definitely recommend some decent nitrile rubber gloves to protect your hands because the dot fluid is corrosive. I like to recommend people to use a set of decent needle nose pliers. Now this is just for taking off that little retaining clip on the retaining bolt that goes through the pads. It's not essential, you can take it off with your bare hands but it does make it a lot easier and a little less fiddly. And finally you can need some shop towel or a clean rag to make sure you can wipe the bike down and obviously to lay the bits out on a bench. And some disc brake cleaner is good as well to make sure that all the parts of your brake don't have any residue on afterwards that can take the paint off your bike. So the first thing you need to do is a bit of brake caliper preparation. So obviously you need to get the rear wheel out of the bike and out of the way. In my case is a six millimeter Allen key. Just wanna make sure the rear derailleur is locked out and ready so I can drop the wheel out nice and easily. Now it's really important that you make sure that you put your rear wheel completely out of harm's way. And what I mean by that is making sure there's no chance that any brake oil can go anywhere near the rear disc rotor because contamination is the number one thing you do not want with brakes. Completely hinders performance and you have to start fresh. So next up is getting the needle nose pliers and very carefully just removing the little clip here. You don't want it to go pinging off across the workshop. There we go. And as with any job, make sure you take all the parts off and put them in the order that you will remember when you reassemble things. In this case, I'm just going to put this on a bench here because I'm going to put the pads separate. So it's a two and a half millimeter Allen key to remove the retaining bolt. So just unwind that from the caliper. Slide that bolt out. And it's time to remove the pads. Now this is a really important bit. If you've got dirty hands, make sure they don't go near the actual brake pad surfaces. And of course, what you wanna do is make sure those pads are kept completely safe and away from any contamination. So in this case, I'm just gonna put them inside a bit of shop towel here, wrap that up, and just keep these here in the work stand for later on so I know that they're protected by that. Last thing you need to do for your brake caliper preparation is slide the uh, bleed block in place, and it's got a little slot running through it so you can just keep it in place with that retaining bolt so i recommend you do do that to just make sure that it can't go anywhere and your brake's going to feel absolutely perfect once you've done this there we go next stage is to get the syringes ready for use so this is where the 
the rubber gloves come in, so I do recommend you use them. I've seen many people do it without. And I'm guilty of not using gloves a lot of the time because of the way I like things to feel, but I'll always use them when playing around with stuff that's corrosive, especially dot brake fluid. It's nasty stuff to get on your hands. So the first syringe you want to fill up with fluid is the one that goes into the lever it's at the top of the bike. This is the one with the old style cap on the end there. And you want to fill this approximately two thirds full. The next one is the one with the bleeding edge adapter on, which I'm just installing here ready for use. Now this needs a marginal amount of fluid in it. It's got to have some fluid because it connects to the actual caliper itself and you don't want a chance of any air being able to get into the caliper. But you're bleeding from the lever end to this end so the oil is going to be purged into here. So as much room as possible for the oil to come through is what you're aiming for. Now when you fill these up, do take care because you're going to need to make sure there are no air bubbles inside them. So you extract the oil straight from the container then you need to ensure that there's no air stuck in there. And the way to do that is carefully just get it upright and put a, put a rag over the end. You don't want this to go anywhere, especially not near your eyes. And you just want to just push the system through just so you're getting rid of that air that's just in there. Like that. You can see it rising up through the tube. Repeat that same process with the one with the bleeding edge on. But again, on this one, you only need the tiniest amount of fluid in here. There we go. So now the syringes are ready for use. Again, don't forget, keep the gloves on, make sure you've got plenty of lint-free rag or shop towel ready to wipe up any spillages. And of course, if it goes anywhere near your frame, handlebars, anything like that, get it wiped and cleaned off using a sort of disc brake cleaner or an isopropyl alcohol as fast as you can, really, just so it doesn't get any damage to your paintwork. Okay, so first up, starting up at the the bar end here. It might make it easier to do this job for yourselves if you just have the lever horizontal. So it makes it a little less messy and because you're going to be working from the back of the bike as well as the front at the same time, it makes it easy to reach too. So using the T25, just flatten off your brakes a bit. If your bike has contact adjustment, there's a little dial on the front here, this particular one doesn't, unwind it the opposite direction of the arrow on there until it stops. Also, you want to make sure the reach of the lever as well is between 75 and 80 millimeters at the end of the lever to the middle of the bar. Next up, you want to get the T10 and remove the bleed screw that's on the top. Now, just be delicate as you remove this because you don't want to disturb the bike too much. You may lose a little bit of fluid out the top here. Just be ready for that. And wipe up any excess that just comes out. Next up, it's time to insert the syringe into the lever end. Now you just want to make sure the little red pinch is snapped shut on here because you don't want oil to travel in there yet. You're just sealing the system with this at the top end. Make sure it's threaded in nice and straight and nice and snug. And I'm just going to give this another wipe around here to minimise the drippage. Another little tip I like to use is an extra piece of shop towel or rag. I just put this under the lever and around it. So whilst I'm working on it, it can catch anything and also it does mean that I've got easy access just to stop it going anywhere. Now it is important to note the fact that the levers are obviously above the front wheel of your bike. If you think there's any danger that dropping oil could go near your front disc rotor, remove your front wheel from the bike, make sure it's stashed somewhere safely so the disc rotor is protected from dripping oil. Next up is getting the bleeding edge tool into the caliper. So to do this, first up you want to just remove the little rubber bung there and just put that aside for safe keeping. Next is the 4mm Allen key head that's in here. Now you just want to just loosen this and then just nip it up tight again, but literally nip it tight. As you do this, a drop of oil might come out of the caliper. Don't worry about this, of course you might want to wipe it up. Um, we're obviously going to be pushing more oil through this way. This is just to make sure it's ready to receive the tool. I'm just going to insert that into there. There we go, just loosen that and then just nip it tight. Just means that your pressure's not on the tool to undo that head in there. Now next up is to take the bleeding edge tool, push it into the caliper and give it a firm push and you'll find it makes a sort of a click noise. So with the tool located in place, so it clicks into place there, you then want to open the system. So you want to undo this a turn. Don't go more than two turns because the screw will come out and then all the oil will start coming out and you're going to have to do this from scratch. So 
Bear in mind that when you open this, no oil is going to come through just yet because it, the lever clamp is holding the oil for coming through at the lever end. But get this done right and you're ready to start the bleeding process. To start the bleeding process, head up to the lever end and you want to undo that lever clamp. And then simply you just want to start pushing down on the plunger. Don't go too fast, you want to do this nice and slowly to give any air bubbles and muck in the system time to sort of migrate through. Now you want to be looking here at the caliper end for any air bubbles and stuff coming out. Now, note you've got enough fluid inside the lever end to do a push through the whole system, so keep an eye on the discoloration of the fluid coming out. If it's particularly bad, uh, black even, stuff like that, you might need to do this again with another syringe full of fluid just to make sure the system has got a complete load of nice, new, clean, uncontaminated fluid in there. Now repeat pushing through until there's no more air bubbles coming out at this end. Don't need to go crazy on that because it's not completely finished yet. Just make sure the bulk of it is good. With the caliper syringe vertical, hold that in your right hand and then with your left hand, just pull up on the lever syringe and you're looking for any air bubbles just traveling up, just like that little one there. A couple of microscopic ones, we're good, I think. It's a good, clear system. Nothing else traveling through. Okay, so that is good. There's no more air traveling up at the lever end. So now it's time to close it at the caliper end. And that means the system is closed, but the syringe is still in place, but I can stay there for the time being. And now we go up to the lever end. What you want to do here is bleed the lever and it's also about pressurizing the system. So with it all still open at this end, don't forget it's closed at the caliper end. Pull the lever in and release this a couple of times. And you just want to push this into the lever and then pull out again a couple of times. Just making sure there's no air coming out of there. So I'm convinced now that there is no air traveling out of the lever itself. So one final pull out on the syringe and then push back in hard just to pressurize the system. And now it's time to just lock the syringe clamp into place there. And we're good to start removing this. So now it's time to remove the syringe from the lever. Now just carefully unscrew this. Again, just make sure that the, the clamp on the hose is in place there because otherwise you can have fluid pushing its way through. As you do this, you will get some leakage at the lever. So just try and wipe up any, any bits of leak you have there. There we go. The bolt is recommended to be torqued to 1.5 to 1.7 newton meters. I'll check that in a minute. Just want to make sure this is clean and contamination free. So disc brake cleaner is ideal for this because it's, it dries up. It's a dry solvent. You can use contact cleaner as well, or isopropyl alcohol. Put the boot back on. I'm happy with that. So I'll turn my brake lever to the preferred angle, which is quite low in this particular setting. Now it's time to close the system at the rear and just make sure the caliper is clean and contaminant free before putting the brake pads back in place. So now with the lever end of the bike closed, repeat the same process at the bottom here. So first it's just to remove the bleeding edge tool, comes out and you'll find that no oil comes out because it's a nice smart design. The next thing is to nip up the four millimeter bolt that's underneath that. Just make sure that's snug. Now it's recommended to be tightened to 1.5 to 1.7 newton meters, just like the one on the lever, the T10 there. So you want to follow that up. And then the next step is to just make sure that there's no fluid loss around there, this is fine. And then just replace the rubber plug. And it's time to take the bleed block out. Just give the caliper a clean, because sometimes if any oil has dripped out, it will just be in a place where the pad surfaces will be later on. Then it's a case of replacing the pads, putting the pin back through and the circlip in place. So there you go, that is how simple it is to use the bleeding edge port system on trams brakes. So a pretty simple system, nice and easy for everyone to bleed at home. Now with that leftover fluid that you've got, the clean stuff, you might want to mark this as unused, so you keep that on your shelf separately, and any old fluid, I do recommend that you get that recycled, get that disposed of correctly. So you want to put that in a different container, make sure that it's not anywhere near food sources and don't just pour it down the drain because this stuff is not good for the environment. So for a couple more useful videos, if you want to find out how to hip jump, nothing mechanical, but it's a really cool video with Blake kicking it on some massive jumps, 
click down here. And if you want 10 ways to refresh your bike, it's a non-cost video really, it's just about sensible stuff in maintaining and making the most out of your bike for the year, click down here. As always, click on the globe to subscribe, we've got new content for you every single week. And if you like the video or you found it helpful, give us a thumbs up.